Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's quick video, I'm gonna show you how to downgrade from iOS 11.4, either the official release once it's out or from a current beta to iOS 11.3 or any of Apple's currently signed firmwares. So as an example, in this video, I'll be using my iPhone 6S Plus running iOS 11.4 beta 2 and we'll be downgrading to iOS 11.3. But again, this will just be a general downgrade video that is applicable to every iOS device running iOS 11.4, demonstrating the downgrade process from 11.4 to a lower currently signed version of iOS. So to get started, we are going to head over to this third party site called IPSW.me. The link will be in the description of this video. And once you're here, you're just going to select on your device type, select your device, and then select your desired firmware. In my case, I will select iPhone and then navigate to the iPhone 6S Plus and select iOS 11.3. Now the download will begin to your computer. And we have to use this third party site to manually download this file as we'll need it later in this video to direct iTunes to the specific version of iOS. In contrast, if you just went into iTunes and clicked on the restore button, it would restore your device to Apple's latest signed firmware being iOS 11.3.1 at the time of recording this video. That is why I'm using this third party site called IPSW.me to make this more inclusive to all publicly available currently signed firmwares by Apple. Alright, so while that is downloading, we're going to plug our device into our computer and trust the connection on both our iPhone and our computer. Now here, you'll have to enter the passcode on your device if you have one set up. And once that is done, we're going to click on our device settings tab within iTunes and select our device. Again, your device should appear in iTunes as it does on my computer now. The last thing we need to do is to disable Find My iPhone on our devices. So to do this, we are going to head to the settings app, click on the iCloud section on the top, then select iCloud, and lastly, scroll down and deselect Find My iPhone. Now we are prompted to enter our iCloud password, but once that is entered, Find My iPhone will be disabled. Now with all this in place, and once the file has finished downloading, we are going to perform the restore process. And to do this, we're going to head back into iTunes, navigate to the summary tab of our device, and once this page is here, you will see the check for updates and restore buttons available at the top. Now on a Mac, we're going to hold the Alt key on our keyboard and select Restore. On Windows, we're just going to hold the Shift key. Now after doing that, a pop-up window will appear which will allow you to manually select the IPS file that we just downloaded. So in my case, I'm going to navigate to the desktop and select the iOS 11.3 Restore file that I downloaded. Again here, you can select any IPSW file that is currently being signed by Apple. This downgrade method, however, does not apply to non-signed versions of iOS, like 11.2.6 or lower. Now lastly, before I begin, restoring with this method will remove all the data on our iPhone and reset it back to the factory defaults. Now if you want to keep your data from iOS 11.4 and have it remain on iOS 11.3, instead of alt-clicking the restore button, alternatively we can alt-click the check for updates button, and iTunes will then perform an update from iOS 11.4 to iOS 11.3 and it will leave the user data intact. But just as a fair warning, this method does not always work out without having problems. The restore cannot finish correctly sometimes, and even if it does, your device cannot function properly once it's restored using this method. But if that happens to you, not to fear, all you have to do is perform a second restore process, this time using the restore button instead of the check for updates button. But as a last resort option, you could use this check for updates downgrade process to keep your data on your iPhone if you don't have an archived backup of your device when downgrading. Alright, so before I get into any more technicalities, I'm going to start this restore process. Again, we are just going to hold Alt or Shift and then click the restore button. Now we're going to navigate to our IPSW file and then select continue. And now this restore process will begin downgrading from iOS 11.4 to iOS 11.3. Alright, once you click restore, the restore process will begin downgrading you from iOS 11.4 to iOS 11.3. Now I will minimize this process down to the bottom of this video, and while this restore process is going on in real time, I'm going to talk about a few other things. The first thing I want to demonstrate is I want to show you guys how to archive a backup within iTunes for future reference. If, say, you're on iOS 11.3, you can archive a backup to save that backup for 11.3 
if you so in the future decide to update to iOS 11.4, you will always have a backup on your computer of your data on iOS 11.3. So to start this process, you're going to head into iTunes and create a backup, not on iCloud, but on your actual computer. So all you gotta do is select this computer and then click backup. Now once the backup has completed, here's when we're going to actually archive the backup. We can head up to the iTunes menu bar up in the top left and then navigate down to preferences. From here on the pop-up box that appears, we're going to navigate to devices. Here you will see all the device backups that you have on your computer. We are just going to select the latest one that has been created on iOS 11.3. We're going to right click it and select archive. And now once you have archived a backup, you will see that the backup has been marked with the exact date and time that it was archived. And once that is all in place, you will now have an archived backup that you can revert back to if you ever decide to downgrade back to iOS 11.3 in the future. All right, and lastly, if your device is stuck halfway through the restore process and then it fails and then it shows this logo, this means your device is in recovery mode. And to fix this, simply plug your device into iTunes and then click restore or alt click and select your desired firmware again. This will not preserve any data on your phone, but it's really the only option available that you have if your device is in this state. And very lastly, if your device keeps failing during the restore process halfway through, or if it does not show up in iTunes at all, an easy fix for this problem is to place the phone into DFU mode and then perform the restore. Now it's much easier to confirm that your device is in DFU mode if it's connected to the computer before we begin this process. So with your device connected on the iPhone 6s or earlier, or any phone with a home button, you can enter DFU mode by holding down the sleep-wake button as well as the home button for 5 seconds. Then we're going to release the sleep-wake button and continue to hold the home button for 5 more seconds until the phone appears in iTunes. Now if the phone just restarts like it did in my case in this example, I did not hold the first two buttons for long enough, so I'm going to try this one more time holding the sleep wake and home button for 5, maybe even 7 seconds until the phone turns off and it stays completely black, so I'm just going to hold it a little bit longer. Now release the sleep wake button and now it looks like we're good to go. It's actually going to enter DFU mode. And again, an easy way to confirm that it is in DFU mode is by checking your computer. So here's the phone in iTunes confirming that we are in DFU mode. Again, a good way to double check that you are in DFU and not recovery is the only option you will have available to you is to do a restore. The upgrade button will be grayed out. Now on the iPhone 7, the process looks like this. Hold down the sleep wake button as well and the volume down button now instead of the home button for 5 seconds. Then just like the other one we're going to release the sleep wake button but continue to hold down the volume down button for 5 more seconds until the phone appears in iTunes. And lastly on the iPhone 8 and 10 models this process gets a little bit more complicated but you should be able to do it just fine. We are going to use both the volume buttons as well as the new side button to perform this process. So to start we're going to press the volume up then the volume down, and then press the side button for 10 seconds. Now your phone will shut off halfway through this process, but once the 10 seconds have elapsed, you're now going to repress the volume down button once more while you're still holding the side button. Now after five seconds of holding both of these buttons, you're going to release the side button and continue to hold the volume down button until your device appears in iTunes in DFU mode. Anyway, once you're here, you should easily be able to perform a restore and it should go off without a hinge now that you're in DFU mode. But once your device has now successfully finished restoring, you will now be running your preferred older version of iOS, in my case 11.3. Now we can begin to set up our devices as normal and or restore from an archived backup from iTunes. Again, if your backup was created while your device was on a newer version of iOS, you will not be able to use it to restore your data to this older version of iOS. Thus is why an archive backup comes in handy. Anyway guys, that is the downgrade process in a nutshell using iTunes of how to downgrade from a newer firmware to an older firmware with an iTunes that's still being signed. I hope you guys enjoyed today's quick video on how to manually downgrade your device to a desired older firmware. If this video helped out, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you want more Apple related tutorial videos, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.